The AMD Socket A is an interesting platform for retro gaming. It supports processors from 600MHz all the way up to 2GHz and faster. It is a great platform for Windows 98 and Windows XP but also DOS and other operating systems. Choosing a decent motherboard is the first step. There's always the debate of going period correct but I'm going with something that is readily available, affordable, compatible and just works. It is a motherboard with the VIA KT600 chipset. Expa is the brand affiliated with Gigabyte but there are lots of other models that you could go for. Do check the capacitors and you might have to replace them but otherwise it's an easy choice. The processor we're using will be revealed in a future video. This machine will be my benchmarking system for a range of Socket A processors. Socket A CPUs have the die exposed and you've got to be a little bit careful when mounting the cooler. The model I'm using is from StarTech. I got it a few years ago and it works great. The amount of RAM depends a bit on the operating system. We're going with Windows XP for this build, so two sticks of 1GB DDR400 is my choice. I thought long about what video card I should be using. Initially, I wanted to go with a GeForce 2, but because the Socket A supports such a wide range of processors, I thought something more powerful might be a better choice. So today we're going for the GeForce 3, specifically one of the refresh versions, the GeForce 3 Ti 500. That should let us play a wide range of games and not hold back faster CPUs. For sound we're using the Sound Blaster Audigy 2 ZS, a great sound card which supports EAX and it sounds fantastic and also has very easy to use drivers which can be downloaded from the creative website. For storage we're going with an IDE hard drive this time, it is a 120GB IDE drive from the Seagate Barracuda 7200.7 series which does just under 60 megabytes per second of transfer rate and is pretty quiet as well. I'm also using an IDE DVD-ROM, really just for installing Windows and maybe some games, although most games will just be digital versions that I'm gonna install from a USB hard drive. This is the USB hard drive, it's an old laptop drive I had lying around and I got a couple of these transparent USB 3.0 enclosures. I've got GOG games on here as well as all the drivers, benchmarks and other tools. The board does support USB 2.0 so speed isn't an issue and it's a nice change from the slot 1 platform for example. We also need a power supply and like in most of my projects I'm using a basic power supply from Corsair. Because I'm using an open test bench, I'm just going to attach some buttons and LEDs to the front panel headers, which lets me power on the machine, hit the reset switch and also monitor the hard drive activity. The machine turned on just fine and the first step is the BIOS of course. I usually load the optimized defaults, set the time and disable any resources we don't need. For example, in this case, I turned off the SATA controllers as well as the Ethernet controller. I built myself an automated installation CD with Nlight. It enters the license key, my name and all the other options like the region or the network name. Windows XP Service Pack 1 is what we're using today as it is lightweight and supports USB 2.0 storage. After the installation the chipset drivers are the first drivers to get installed. I'm using the latest drivers from the VIA website. Next up is the NVIDIA GeForce driver. We are going with version 45.23. These are from 2004 and old enough to work with most of the older games, but also compatible with newer games. We also need to install the Coolbits registry tweaks. These unlock extra driver features, mostly I'm after the vSync options, so I can disable them for benchmarking. The latest USB 2.0 drivers from the website didn't work out for me, but the ones from the motherboard CD installed just fine. For the sound card, I got the latest drivers from the creative website. They are very minimalistic and after the installation, all you have to do is just disable CMSS, but otherwise the default settings can be left as they are. I've also updated DirectX to version 8.2. That should be a very good match with the GeForce 3. And finally we're gonna install some benchmarks. We've got 
3D Mark II and 2001 SE, as well as copying across my usual games, Incoming, Dragon, Expandable, GL Quake, Quake 2, Quake 3, MDK2 and also Serious Sam. So let's wrap up this build. I've worked with this board before and I always like using it. I had zero issues. However, do stay away from using the SATA devices. The via SATA controllers or the BIOS, they're just not that great. However, ID compatibility and performance is really good. So I do recommend sticking with an ID hard drive and an ID optical drive. As a sneak peek, we have some 3D Mark results for you. So maybe you can have a guess at what processor is being used in this build. And this processor will be the first one to kick off some AMD CPU reviews. We got 4,615 for 3D Mark 2000 and 4,270 for 3D Mark 2001 SE. And that's it for this video, guys. Do let me know if you've got any feedback or suggestions in the comments down below. As this system will be used for a lot of future AMD CPU review videos, I really need to finalize everything over the next few days. As always, if you enjoyed this build and you want to get updates on future videos, why not subscribe? If you have done so already, thank you for supporting me. Like or dislike and share this video with your friends. And that's it for today guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with another video.